Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how we can use this um, this spreadsheet on ionization energy and atomic radius to um, to look at, at plotting some of the, the periodic trends. Um, and so, what we have here on, on this particular screen, so this is so I've um, this is the spreadsheet that you can download and then open up, and then you can start to have a play with. So <clears throat> there's two kind of tabs here, IE down the bottom and radii. I'm working in Microsoft Excel, which you may or may not be all that familiar with. Um, if you're not, I would encourage you that it would be very, very useful to, to learn and have a go with. Um, if you are, then hopefully some of these features will be pretty straightforward for you. So what we have here just on this screen to do with ionization energy, we've got the list of the first 20 elements. Okay, so from hydrogen up to calcium listed across the top with their atomic number just underneath. And our atomic number is also known as Z um, for some strange reason. Don't ask me why. Um, and so then what we have in this, this table here is our ionization energy for um, the different electrons that are inside each atom. So remembering that ionization energy is the energy that is involved in stripping an electron away or pulling an electron out of that atom. Um, and so then what you see here is that we have, um, it's this kind of like stepped kind of look to this, we've got a, a data set, so some numbers in this kind of top right hand kind of bit, um, going from only one for hydrogen all the way down to 20 for calcium. Now hopefully the, 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 this should be reasonably apparent as to why that we don't have the same number for each. But remember that e, that every um, element that we go up here, we add an extra electron. So hydrogen only contains one electron, whereas helium contains two, lithium three, beryllium four, you know, calcium contains 20. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the energy that it takes um, is required to strip um, subsequent electrons away from an atom. So the first electron, the second, the third, and so on. So for calcium that we've got a list of 20 electrons to try and pull away from that nucleus. Um, now also, hopefully it, it should also be apparent that not all atoms are going to, um, you know, that, that, that there are some elements where the tendency would be to gain electrons, to take electrons from something else rather than to give them up. Whereas ionization energy is all about how much energy it is to take that electron away from the atom. So the relative difficulty of that will affect the numbers that we see here. So now what we have, the ionization energies listed in, in units called electron volts. Okay, each electron volt is roughly about 100 kilojoules for every mole. Okay, so, in, so that's just a, a unit that of, of energy that, that is applicable at the atomic level. Okay, so what you've been uh, anyway, what you've been asked to do in this activity is to plot um, the successive ionization energies for boron, um, for silicon, and for calcium. Okay, and so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so what we we're going to do, let's do boron first, which will be in this column over here. Now I'm going to um, I'm not going to highlight anything from the top two rows over here. Okay, I'm just going to highlight um, just the data from the first down to the bottom kind of level. So in this case for boron, because it's five electrons, there's five data points here. Okay, so now in Excel, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to go up to the Insert tab up the top here, and then I'm going to go to over to where we've got Charts over here. And so I'm going to pick this one over here, which is the Scatter Chart. Okay, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to just do a normal kind of dot point scatter. Okay, and so now in order to, to remind me that I'm talking about boron, I've got a chart title here and I'm going to double click and edit it so that it now reads for boron. Okay, I'm going to click and drag it just to put it underneath so that I've got somewhere to put it. Okay, because we're going to come back to look at these in, in um, as we go. All right, I'm now going to do silicon, so I'm going to do the same idea. I'm going to click and highlight. So, um, so I click in the so you can click and then with the, the, the left mouse button click down if or the, the trackpad, um, click down and then just drag it down and then let go at the point at which you want it to stop. Then you go, same deal, insert, scatter, and this one is silicon. Okay, so I'm going to park it down the side here, down the bottom here just next to boron, and then I'm going to do calcium. Now, so calcium has 20 electrons, so it will have the most data points on our graph. 
Okay, so it's going to look like that. Okay, so just as before, um, calcium. Oops, I hit enter too soon. Okay, now, so now I have three graphs over here. I'm just going to get rid of the chart area thing over there so that you can see a little bit more as I move my way down. Okay, so hopefully what we can see, well, all right, let me move this down underneath. That might, might make it a little easier to see them all at the same time. Okay, so what we can see is that the electrons are not equally easy to extract from our atom. Okay, so for each of these atoms, the more... Okay, so the first thing that we can notice, the more electrons that we try to take, the harder it gets. We get to, you know, so a certain amount of energy here, and then it requires more energy for the next one, and the next one, and then the next one, and the next one. Okay, so in each of these cases, they always get successively harder. However, one thing that you do notice is that they're not equally, um, the, the increase is not linear as far as it, or it's not saying, okay, well, for every electron that you add, it gets you know, 50% harder or whatever, that we see a certain increase kind of looking at boron, we see this increase seems to be fairly consistent. And then all of a sudden from three to four, we've jumped hugely up to a whole other level and then up and a little bit more again to go to number five. So we've ended up with two electrons over here on their own. And then these three electrons, which are kind of in, in a, a, the same sort of group. Okay. And then if we have a look at silicon over here, we've got another kind of grouping again. We have two at the end here, and then we've kind of got this sort of level, and then this sort of level. Okay, so these, these two are a little bit hard to tell apart. Like, like, sorry, these um, two um, ele electrons way up high are distinctly different from the rest, but they're, it's a bit harder to tell these two groups apart from each other. Um, and what we, what we say, and I'll, I'll show you one way that we can um, improve that in a second. Okay, um, and so we can see the same sort of thing with calcium that we we get this massive jump to the, these last two, and then we kind of got a set, and then some more sets here. But one way that we can improve this is to use what's called a logarithmic scale. So where rather than having a, a linear increase in the scale on the side, that every measurement on the side um, goes up by a power of ten. So what we do, okay, I'm going to right click on the actual, the number axis over on the left over here. And I'm gonna go format axis. Now on this version of Word of Excel that I'm working with over here, I get these different formatting options over here. Okay, and one is the option called logarithmic scale. So I'm just gonna click that checkbox and now I can tick that off. And you can see that my scale has changed. I've gone from one to 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. For every unit that it goes up, it's 10 times larger. Now we can see these three distinct groupings with a little more clarity. We have a group here, a group here, and a group here. So we have two, we have eight, and then four. Okay, now if I do the same thing for calcium, right click on the axis, actually I'll just scroll down. Right click on the axis, format axis, logarithmic scale once again. And look what we have here. We have four distinct groupings. We have two, eight, eight, two two, eight, four, and then we have two. Now let's see if, if I do this, the logarithmic scale for boron, it's probably not as important. Um, it probably almost obscures it a little bit, but we get two distinct kind of groupings here. I might just untick that one because we can see it clearly enough here. Um, part of the reason for that is that the difference is not quite as large. We don't need to adjust the scale to the same degree to get the right impression. Okay, so we have two and then three. So you can see that in each of these cases that a, that the electrons get harder to remove for every electron that we're pulling away. B, that the increase is not um, linear, that, that there are points at which it seems to jump up to a much higher energy level. And then C, that we can also see that there is a pattern to how many electrons there would be in these groups. So we always have a group of two really hard ones right at the very end. Okay, two, two, and two. Um, and then when the more the next kind of highest group that we get has eight okay so two and then eight two and then eight um, we don't need that many in boron because we've only got five electrons to try and fit um, so if we added more if we went from boron to carbon and so on that we would see that we would fill out that group of eight and then here we had four so two eight and then four to fill up our 14 for silicon and then calcium we have two eight eight 
and then two at the end. Okay, so um, we can see that for the first two groups of electrons that we can, the first one we can fit two, the second one that we can fit eight, and then the next one um, it, we seem to fit eight, and then we can, and with calcium, we're going to go up to two. Um, so we can see that we get these distinct groupings of electrons. And this really helps to, to give us a, a lot of clarity about uh, where Bohr's model comes from in terms of actually seeing that electrons fill up energy shells, but those energy shells have a fixed capacity, that they only have room for a certain number of electrons. Okay, so have a bit more of a go of this, with this spreadsheet and try this out for yourself. Pick a couple of different elements within the data set to see if that the, um, the answers that you've come up with to the questions, kind of the pattern bears out. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.